Hey guys, this is Aaron. I want to take a look today at this shape right here. This is a polygonal solid with 12 sides, each made of the exact same size of pentagon. This is called a dodecahedron. I like saying dodecahedron, so I'll be saying it a lot through this video. We're going to take a look at creating a dodecahedron from scratch in SketchUp. Now, if I really wanted this shape, there's a couple things I could do. I could hop up to 3D Warehouse and download one of a few dozen up there. There's also a few extensions that I could install into SketchUp that would let me create this solid with just a few clicks. But what we're going to do is we're going to start from a clean slate and create it using just native tools. So I'm going to start by drawing a five-sided polygon on the ground. I'm just going to drag this out to an arbitrary size. I don't really care what size it is. That's not what I'm looking to do. I'm going to triple click right click and make that into a group. I'm creating a group just to isolate the geometry so my faces don't merge together or anything like that. And then I'm going to use move and the modifier key to make a copy and copy it to this opposite corner. Then I'm going to rotate and pull that corner down there. Okay, pretty simple stuff so far. Now, here's the challenge. I want to create this polygon, this solid, without any sort of math or uh, pre-established angles or anything like that. Uh, I'll tell you a little secret that I was told by my high school algebra teacher. He pulled me aside and told me the secret about math. He said, Aaron, you're very bad at math. So in his honor, I'm going to create this using no maths whatsoever. So a thing I do know about this shape is that when this shape rotates up, if this is the one on the ground, this is going to rotate up so it meets the other sides. I know that when it does rotate up, this point will rotate up along an arc to directly above the center of this shape right here. So all I really have to do is find the center here and then where this will intersect with that center point. So I'm going to start by drawing a line tool. And I'm going to start right at that uh, middle point because the polygon, it remembers my center point. And I'm just going to draw a line straight up the blue axis. All right. Now, what I want to draw is, imagine there was a line following the arc from the middle of this line up and finding that intersection point. I'm going to do this using the arc tool. A lot of times when we talk about the arc tool, we end up using the two-point arc, where I define two points and then a bulge. In this case, I'm going to pick the arc tool and I'm actually going to tell it to draw an arc from this point right here, pulling up from this point, centering around that, that middle point right here. So the first thing I need to do is establish perpendicular to this line. So where is perpendicular to this line? Well, if I toggle through my uh, different options for inferencing angles here, none of them are perpendicular to that line. So what I can do is I'm going to move to the center line, I'm going to click and drag my mouse out to this corner. And when I release, you'll see that my, my protractor right there is locked to perpendicular to that line. So I click on the first point, drag, and release on the second point. Now I can come out here to my end point, click again, and now bring my mouse up and around to the point that that line hits that X. That X is what I'm looking for, which is an intersection. If I click right there, now, I can delete these extra lines, and I know this point should rotate up to where it hits right here. I can actually get rid of this arc, too, because all I really need is that snap point right there. So I'm going to grab the side. I'm going to use the rotate command again. One more time, I'm going to click on the middle and drag my mouse down to this point. That's going to set my protractor perpendicular to the line. And I'm going to click on the end point and bring that endpoint up till it snaps to that endpoint of the line. Now I can actually get rid of that line. All right, so I have one side. At this point, it's all pretty quick and easy. I'm going to grab that side, and I'm going to use rotate along with, again, the modifier key to make a copy from one corner to the next. And just to make this go quick, I'm just going to type in x4 and hit enter. I told it I wanted to do that four times, so I'll make four copies. 
All right, I'm halfway done at this point. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab all these pieces, right click, and make that into a group. Now I'm going to use the move command along again with the modifier key of option or alt, depending on if you're Mac or Windows. And now I'm going to take that while still in move, I'm just going to use these uh, little handles on the move box. I'm going to grab this one right here and I'm going to flip it over 180 degrees. It's actually going to snap at 180. Boom, there you go. Now I can move it again. I'm still in move. I'm going to grab this point right here and I'm going to put it in this point right there. Getting close. One last time with rotate. This time I'm going to move on to the point here and in case I can't snap it, I can hit the up arrow key to restrain to uh, the blue plane. And I'm going to click this point and bring that point over to there. At that point, I can select all my groups, right click and explode. So that exploded into a bunch of surfaces. If I grab all those surfaces and right click explode again, everything joins together. I can tell it's joined together because my profiles aren't showing up on the inside. I can always double check this by hitting move, grabbing a face and moving it around. And oh, look at that beautiful, ugly deformation. That's what I'm looking for. That is indicating that this is all joined together. I don't have any weird spots where there's gaps between lines or anything like that. What I've created at that point using just SketchUp native commands and no maths is a beautiful, perfect dodecahedron. Thank you.